Hello and welcome. My name is Adam Velengawa and this is going to be part two of my review of the Revo FC 130 from Optopole. Let's review. When you start the machine, this is what you see. You can either select the existing patient or add the patient. You can search for the patient by type of exam, date, and also the user. And this is the acquire image screen. So when it comes to retina, it can be either 3D scan or line scans. You have also raster and radial scans. You have multiple raster and NGO OCT. So NGO OCT can be done up to 15 millimeters or mosaics. Disc, the same story, 3D disc, line, NGO. You can also use the central. So this is basically the same type as the retina, but very wide, like 15 millimeters wide. Um, and here you can add OCT or OCT plus fundus photo. And you can also do fundus photo alone. So let's just briefly go through the settings. For every scan, you can change the number of A scans, B scans or repeats. The more A scans, B scans or repeats, the higher resolution, but also the longer the time required. Also, when you have the options, you can change when it's the NGO, you can change the length of the scan between three millimeters or 15 millimeters. And this applies more or less to all the scans. So we can change the length of the scan. Also the scanning height steps. Every scan can be taken simultaneously with a fundus camera. So this option is off here. And with the fundus camera, you can also change the exposure time, the flash level and the gain. The scans can either be vitro retinal Seagate mode or choreo retinal. Uh, all the scans can have the acceptance window. So you basically accept it or reject it. And then you have the fundus preview option. So whether it's the infrared, PSLO uh, or SLO, the settings can then be set as default and then they will apply to every type of scans you selected. All the scans can be done automatically. Please blink then keep your eye open. And the machine speaks in various languages, so you can use your own language. Thank you. You can blink freely. That's how easy it is. But what happens if you have a very difficult eye, like here, so we have the patient with nystagmus and aniridia. So we are going to change the settings in order to facilitate. So this were like medium, B-scan, settings, and right now we'll just drop the resolution and this is going to be super fast because it's 0.28 seconds and this is how fast it is so no automatic mode and the machine is super fast so these are the results so this is the cross the line um, sometimes blurred somehow but still getting a nice image so this is the medium resolution b scan you don't see the on face due to the motion artifact but more or less the resolution of the singular B scans is very nice. You don't see fovea because it's naturally, this is the aniridia. So let's just look at the lower resolution. So you see that the lowest resolution has its toll on the quality of the image, but on the other side, the on face imaging is pretty, pretty decent, right? So on the left, and this is back to the medium B scan resolution. It's acceptable. We don't see any blurriness and that's okay. This is the, Fundus photo from the eye with nystagmus. It's also acceptable. It's very nice. And naturally there's no fovea. You have three different RGB digital filters, and then you can also have both eyes next to each other and then change the brightness, change the contrast, and also change the sharpness of the image. The fundus camera is superb when it comes to an OCD built system. The smallest pupil diameter is 3.3. Naturally you can go below, but then you will see some sort of blurring at the edges. Let's quickly have a look at the most frequently used scan and the display option from this scan, so 3D maps. So here we have the reconstruction on the top left that can be also changed into SLO or infrared image. Below there is the ETDRS circle. Below the circle you have the table in which you can put different values depending on the display option you took here, there, they are the volumetric parameters. On the right side, there is the B scan. Below the B scan, there is the thickness graph. And on the right side, we have the three different color coded maps. Here you can put the retinal significance, retinal deviation, as well as thickness. 
this can be also displayed with the ETDRS chart on the OCT reconstructed fundus. When it comes to B scans, you can change the brightness, contrast of the image with your mouse or with the thumbnails on the top left. Then you can edit the layers because you saw that there is a graph below with the retinal thickness and you can also cut the most hyperreflective layers like here. If you want to see the uh, limiting membranes, you just cut the RNFL, for instance, if it's the internal limiting membrane. And then you can also cut the hyperreflective if you just want to see uh, the retina without the vitreous. You can change the colors, whether it's the inversion or whether it's the black and white and color. And then the funny thing is that you can change the brightness and contrast of the particular layer. So here we are cutting down the choroid. We can also do this very same with the retina. So just get rid of the retina and then also the vitreous. There is a caliper option so you can measure or you can measure the area. You can zoom in using a mouse or the magnifying glass option. And if you took the fundus photo together with the image or you linked it, then you can also see the image. So basically all the function that I showed you on the line scan can also be used here on the 3D scan. Right now I'm measuring the area, you also have the caliper option, and the only difference between those two types of scans is that you have the reconstruction or the on face OCT on the top left. So what's the difference between resolution on the different scans? This is the radial scan, which has like medium, low resolution. This is like medium resolution. This is like 30 repeats. And this is the highest resolution B scan. You see more details. So the question is, why don't we use only the highest resolution? And the answer is the size of the images. You just need a lot of disk space if you want to use the highest resolution. There is also a splendid 3D mode. And here we can have different types of colors it can also be the on face if we inverse the image it looks kind of like the icg obviously we can also move the image zoom in zoom out and then we can select the particular layers that we want to display another pleasant feature is that if you double click on the 3d simulation you see the retina thickness and a kind of like an arrow you can change the separation of the layers and then you'll see them further apart from each other. Instead of the on face OCT as the top layer, you can use the color from this photo and then it acts as if it's also a 3D image. The machine has multiple comparison options, so let's just start with the right and left. And here we can compare between the retina or the ganglion cells. So there are like two options for viewing. And you can change the fitting of the B scan. You can also change the position of the fovea, like right now I'm changing it. If you're thinking that it's not pos positioned properly, then you can change the ETDRS chart, whether it's the maximum average volume cube, depending on your preferences. Then you also can change the display option on the scan. If you want to compare between both visits, two visits, you can do it. And this option provides you with more information than the progression analysis, because you have more windows that you can adjust. Speaking of the progression, you can see the progression up to six visits. And here you have three different types of options. So you can compare the retina, ganglion cells, all the tonomograms. You can compare them one by one. You can adjust the, the lines. You also have the retinal thickness graph. Or if you click this tiny lock, then all the changes and the viewing of the one scan is going to affect all the other scans. Next, I want to show you the OCT and geography. Here you have the four different windows in which you can put different segmentations. And then there is also reconstruction in the B scan. The segmentation can be changed on the B scan, or if you want a detailed segmentation adjustment, you can do it on like just a, a big screen from the B scan, and then you can do it manually by mouse. Here again, Optopole spoils us with the myriad of options. You can change the color, it can be colored, it can be inverse, it, you can have the information about the flow, you can also change the positioning of the B scan, and you can measure the size of the flow size, like here, if you have a nice CNV, you can do it automatic, like semi-automatically, or you can just delineate all the points along the lesion, and it's uh, 0 
five. You can also do it manually and delineate them by yourself. The more points you do, the more accurate the results. And it's going to be 0 0.444. So the difference between the automatic and the manual is negligible. There is also an advanced viewing mode where you can manually change between the segmentation and you only have one large screen of the OCT and geography. This is the glaucoma module and here we have all the information about the optic nerve including the area, volume, depth, plus we also have the two color maps, the B-scan and also we can manually delineate the optic nerve if we feel that the machine didn't segment it properly. If you double click on the B-scan you can also adjust the borders of the optic nerve on the B-scan rather than on the on-face OCT and if you took a photo together with the 3D optic nerve scan or you link the photo from another fundus camera you can also compare the parameters of the optic nerve with the color from this photo of the nerve head. We can also compare both eyes so right now I'm changing the scanning on the one eye but if you lock it then you will see the changes simultaneously. If you took both the 3D macula and the 3D disc you can also use this advanced option when you see the changes in the GCL as well as the changes in the RNFL. If you feel that the fovea was not placed properly you can change it here you know, and then you can change the color maps whether it's the NFL whether it's the NFL plus GCL and IPL or just the GCL and IPL thickness. We can also see the NFL deviation. The progression al analysis is also present so you can see the changes between up to six visits and you can have different display option. There's also a graph and a table with the optic nerve head parameters. If you wish you can also do the OCT and geography of the optic nerve and this is not different than the OCT and geography fit window I showed you before. So you can change different layers, you can change the segmentation on the B-scan. The only difference is that here instead of viewing the macular thickness you can also view the NFL thickness. If you have the perimetry from Optopole you can combine the perimetry and the optic nerve into one view. So here you have the numerical or the graphical display of the visual field plus underneath you have all the statistical parameters like GHT, MD, PSD and VFI. Further we have the GCL and the RNFL maps and we can switch between different views used by different devices, the one that you are mostly accustomed to in addition, there's also structure and function graph, and this is the modified by Optopol structure function because in original the macula area was much larger, and because of you know this this size difference, it was less sensitive than the modified. So right now it's more sensitive, and this is this is it, right? So here you have all the information. You have the GCL, NFL, is the parameters of the optic nerve, the parameters from the perimetry so for somebody who's doing the glaucoma this is one device that has everything if you have the perimetry from optopole and also you have the color from this photo of the optic nerve so everything you need from a device if you're a glaucoma doctor so for instance this patient has some changes in the perimetry but on the RNFL we see that the alterations in the nerve thickness are actually much bigger than we would expect from the from visual field testing in the left eye. What if you don't have a Revo with a fundus camera? Well, there, that's not a big deal because you can still use another fundus camera and link the images. So you can import them and then you can adjust the view of the OCT. Right now you see that you basically by moving the mouse on the fundus camera photo you can also change the uh, the image on the B scan right so those images are totally linked you can try different fundus camera you can try uh, FA ICG or autofluorescence and as long as you import the image all the images from different fundus camera behave the same as the images from Revo so you can change the sharpness gamma and so on you can also use digital filters 
Last, I want to touch on the setup. So here you can change the language, you can change the different type of storage, whether it's the QNAP or whether it's the SD. You can change users, you can have, you can change preferences, and in preferences, you can add or remove protocols, you can add different types of examination, so the examination will be done automatically. There are also sounds that you can have after the patient uh, is placing the head or whatever. Then there is the backup information, the recovery and diacom settings. That's it. That's the end of my review. And the question I want to ask is, is this the best device on the market? Well, I guess for the money you have to spend on it, the answer is yes. But I think that if you're a general ophthalmologist and let's say you have a patient with keratoconus, a kid with progressive myopia, somebody who has choroidal nevi, somebody who has uh, AMD, somebody who has glaucoma, you are going to benefit from all these functions in one device, right? Because you don't need to buy Pentacam, you don't need to buy Fundus Camera, all functions in one device. This is unique and excellent. Another group of doctors that's going to benefit from this device I think are glaucoma specialists because you can connect it to the perimetry. You also have the fundus camera, so you can take shots of the optic nerve, and it's 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 really great. Great. You also have this structure function charts, which are quite useful for glaucoma people. Plus, you can also measure CCT, you can measure the angle, you can measure lens thickness, and so on, and ACD. Another subspeciality that I would recommend this device for are going to be cornea specialists because in cornea, if you are looking for high resolution B scan without the need to use the lens, plus you also have the radial scans, which is quite unique for the uh, posterior segment OCTs that are making the anterior segment. You have maps of the anterior and posterior curvature of the cornea, plus you have keratoconal screening indices. Naturally, pediatric ophthalmologists are also going to be very happy about this device because it's super fast plus you can monitor myopia in in kids without touching the corneas without anesthetics so it's it's going to be very useful so who is this device not best suited for well if you are a retina person and you're looking for a very high resolution oct angiography i would recommend you look further i mean oct and geography is acceptable especially after latest upgrades to motion correction and eye tracking it became pretty decent but it's still not as detailed as oct and geography from canon or size the quality of the b scan is superb the same applies to the 3d maps you have all the options of modifying the views you can create your own protocols this device is also automatic it speaks to the patient so this is really useful and is very good value for money you spend on it thank you for watching my review i hope you've enjoyed revo is a true swiss army knife among the octs my verdict is this is the most versatile device i think that most general ophthalmologists will benefit from it it's a unique device I hope more companies will also develop such versatile machines with so many functions. So thank you very much for watching and please subscribe because I will be posting more movies.